Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and this is chapter 11, which is investments for subject CT1. Um, in this chapter, I'm not going to go in too much. I mean, this is what the entire video is going to be looking at. It's just going to be looking at 16 different types of investments. And I'm just going to give you a very quick explanation on each one. I mean, there's a lot of resources on the internet if you want to go into this further, or you can see my CA1 videos where I also talk about them in more depth. But basically, you have number one, fixed interest government bonds. Um, this is where a government wants to raise money. So you give the government money, and in return, they give you a fixed interest coupon um, at various intervals to say thank you for lending us money. And then you get your money back at uh, some certain date. Then they could also link that to some sort of index to give you some type of protection against inflation. This is very useful when your bond is very long term. There's also government bills, which is much uh, shorter duration. Um, you then got corporate debt, which is kind of like a bond, but it's when a company rather than the government um, is needing money. Uh, this will normally pay a higher interest rate because a company is more likely to default than an entire country. Reason being is countries can normally raise tax and devalue their, in their currency, except if you're Greece and you're stuck in the Eurozone where you have no control over your monetary policy. Um, then you have these things known as the benches and unsecured loan stocks. They're all sorts of different types of um, debt that companies can issue and they have different ranking on when a company gets wound up, uh, who gets paid first. Unsecured loan stock gets paid last, so it will have a higher interest rate than your debentures. You then have these things known as euro bonds and that is when a company issues bonds um, internationally so there might be a, a currency component, but they're very, very large and they're for those big companies. Um, then you have certificates of deposits. That's also just some sort of a paper instrument that you can use uh, with regards to banks saying, I've got so much money, and you can trade them. Um, I don't know that much about it, so research that one. Um, ordinary shares, this is when you go to the stock market and you think that a company is going to do really well so you want to support them by investing your money and allocating your capital behind them. And in return, um, you're going to be getting a little bit of the company's profits in the forms of dividends. So it's a cash flow where the amounts are a little bit uncertain, but you're hoping for them to continuously to increase because it's a good company. And remember, you can always sell your shares at a later date for a different price. So you can either make money or lose money that way. There's also preference shares, which is a little bit um, in between um, ordinary shares and um, debt, and that it kind of acts a little bit like both. Um, the interest or the dividend gets paid only after the debt has been paid and that value is fixed. Um, sometimes it could also be a convertible, which gives you the option to uh, convert it or change it into uh, equity, which is ordinary share capital. Uh, property. Property, most of you guys have seen buildings. You can invest in a building by buying it, and then in return, you let other people occupy the building and they pay you back rent. Um, and this can be industrial property, corporate property, I mean, commercial property or residential property. Uh, then there's these things known as derivatives, and these, these things are financial instruments that derive their value on another asset, and they're used to speculate or to hedge. Um, one of them being uh, a future. A future is when you say, um, look, I'm going to be needing 100 cows in the future, and you agree on the price today. So if the price goes up, you win because you have, your price is lower, but if the price goes down, you lose because you, know, you just have to pay this higher amount. Uh, but like I said, there are videos and resources that explain futures in more depth. Um, options, they give you the option, uh, that's why they call the option. The, the two main ones are the call option, which gives you the option to buy something, and the put option which gives you the option to sell. So let's say I see a share that I really like, it's trading at 12 Rand. I could say I'm going to buy a call option that lets me buy it at say 13 Rand. And then let's say in the future that share jumps up to 20 Rand. I can then exercise my option and buy it for 13 Rand, and then I can sell it actually straight away and make 7 Rand profit. You do pay a premium in order to get these options because 
there is no downside risk, but you are exposing yourself to unlimited upside risk, which is a nice thing. Um, put option kind of just works in a different way. And then finally, you have these things known as swaps, where you exchange one cash flow for another cash flow. So let's say um, I'm a business and I'm earning um, currency in euros, and there's another business that's earning currency in dollars, we can swap our uh, cash flows so that we both are exposed to the currency that we want to be used to. But swaps get very intense. I mean, um, if any of you guys are thinking of doing subject ST5 or SA5, the fellowship in finance, you'll see that swaps get really hectic. Uh, with regards to each of these investments, what you want to do is look at what is the security, like how risky are they, what is the yield that they give, um, what is the spread, so how volatile they are, what is the tax um, behind it, so normally your government bonds will have less tax than say other things to encourage people to take them up, uh, what are the expenses behind them, I mean when you want to buy a property you need to get an estate agent and all those other people to come make sure that the property is fine, uh, whereas you're buying a share there's the broker's fees, all those things, uh, then you also want to look at the marketability, um, it's much easier to trade shares of a big and well-known company than it is to sell a property because property a little bit less market uh, marketability because there's less people uh, trading it and it takes time. And finally you want to know what is the term of your investment. Ordinary shares and property will have an infinite time uh, whereas your debt instrument will have a very specified time. Um, and yeah, that's basically all there is to investments. You need to know just the very overlay of them. Like I said, you can go into hectic detail uh, with these guys. So if you are interested, I do encourage you to explore them some more. Some of them are really cool. Others are quite boring. But it's up to you to determine which ones you're going to find interesting and which ones not. Thanks guys so much for watching. I am going to be focusing more now on ST9 videos just because that's something I'm studying at the moment. Um, but after I get those done or if I have a break, I'll then get around to making uh, chapter 12 compound interest problems and the other videos. And these videos are going to be a little bit uh, difficult for me to do because yeah, the content is going to be quite tricky. But we should have a lot of fun in making them and I hope you enjoy watching them. So if you haven't done already, subscribe so that you do get alerted when this video is made. You can see the formulas start getting quite scary. But anyway, we're jumping the gun, so let me say cheers. Thanks guys so much for watching. Cheers.